I would say about $1,500 worth of panels. Took self uh, tapping screws here and tapped into the panel. The panels that I've got here are 24 volt panel. It is a direct barrel wire, um, six gauge, and it runs to the house. That means that the air conditioner, the refrigerator, the fan, everything else that's on in the house, the light, they're all being pulled directly off the solar panels. This is truly a beautiful time of the year to get things done around here. You know the weather is not too hot, it's not too cold. It's pretty comfortable out here. Speaking of comfortable, check out these boots. These are some sharp looking boots, but the way they fit is more important. It's like these boots didn't even have a break in period. I slipped them on and they've been comfortable ever since. And I'm trying to show you a good comfortable boot to work in. In case you're curious how to get a pair, go to uh, bruntworkwear.com. Pick you up a set of these boots, man. I'm from the country, you're from the city I drive a truck, you think that's silly But there's another side of me Today I'm going to go over this solar system really quick again and uh, touch on some of the points that people were asking about in the comments. I saw that a lot of people were worried that uh, they couldn't do something like this themselves. And you know, honestly, I didn't think I could do something like this myself. I honestly figured out how to do this by studying online and uh, basically uh, trial and error. You know, what works, what doesn't work. Um, you know, when I had a real serious question, I would get on like a solar forum and talk to some of the guys on there that really knew their stuff. And, you know, they kind of guide you in the right direction on what size uh, battery bank to have and uh, how much power you pull in, how to judge it by watts, uh, where to go with a 12 volt system, 24 volt system, 48 volt system or whatever. So obviously I went with the 48 volt system. I got lucky with a friend who had some solar panels that he had not used. He was going to put them on his system and uh, he decided uh, to go with uh, running electric out to his place. So he had all these brand new solar panels that he hadn't really used and uh, I made him an offer on them. So I got them cheaper than what I normally would. Um, I guess uh, nowadays what the panels are running when I go to look at some of these prices it looks like you can get them for about uh, 50 cents on the watt so in other words if you're looking at um, a 300 watt solar panel you can usually get it for around uh, 150 bucks now a lot of people they uh, they buy the solar racks and the aluminum racks and all these things that uh, you know people sell and the website sell and everything and uh, the problem with that that I saw with that was the price of it they were very expensive and I am a uh, do-it-yourself guy so uh, here's what I did somebody had uh, some old fence posts where they had tore down a carport and uh, these poles were there they were broken and bent I cut them up used them to the size I needed and uh, basically uh, cemented them into the ground here I just made my own little solar panel racks here out of fence post Instead of buying the clips and everything to keep these things mounted down on here, I just took self-tapping uh, screws here and tapped into the panel and then tapped into the pole itself. Uh, and then with some type of plumber's tape there, it was uh, pretty simple. So I have about uh, 3,400 watts here. So, um, you know, if you were going to go buy this brand new on your own, uh, I would say about $1,500 worth of panels, somewhere around there, $1,500, $1,600 you could probably pick up new panels and a system about this size. That would just be for the solar panels. Now let's go to the uh, the other equipment. Up under the panels here, it's all the wiring and uh, how they all connect together here. Um, I really need to get these up off the ground here and, and uh, uh, run it into a type of conduit over here to the boxes. But right now I've got it running on the ground and up to this box here. Now back over here, um, if you go to uh, order this stuff online you can probably get all the wiring you would need for something like this for about 140 150 bucks now all this wiring comes to something that we call a combiner box 
Um, this is basically an outside outdoor breaker box that uh, you know basically everything comes together in here that and it gets it ready to go to the charge controller itself you have your uh, individual breakers for uh, your sets of panels that you have wired together over here the panels that I've got here are 24 volt panels so I have two panels wired uh, together in series which makes them 48 volt um, and then uh, so you'll take two panels at 48, two panels at 48, two panels at 48, and then I wire them all together in parallel. And uh, then we have uh, all of the panel, all of the panels are running together at that point, and they bring they bring the grand total to 48 volts. Okay, back over here to the battery shed. Um, I've showed you this system a couple times in a couple other videos, but let's go over it real quick so you can understand. Um, this is an Ames uh, power inverter. It's what they call a 48 volt inverter because we've run in, we're running the system on 48 volt. If you were going to run your system on a 24 volt or a 12 volt, Ames also makes 24 volt and 12 volt inverters. Now, with it being said, being a 48 volt inverter, it's also a inverter charger. This means that this uh, thing is capable of actually starting up a generator. Um, it has a self-start where it can start a generator and back charge your batteries if the sun is not able to do its job. So it's kind of like a smart uh, inverter charger. It will also charge the batteries once it starts the generator. So now let's go to this uh, TriStar. This is a uh, uh, MPPT solar charge controller. And basically what it does is it governs how much power actually goes into your batteries. You don't want to overcharge your batteries and just run sun to them all the time. So this thing kind of regulates that. That's what that thing's good for. And uh, it also tells you, you know, where you're at as far as, uh, you know, do my batteries have enough voltage in them? Am I bringing in, you know, enough watts today on a cloudy day or, you know, it basically tells you the status of your batteries. And right now the status of our batteries here are float, which means fully charged. So this thing, uh, this thing here costs about 550 if you buy it on Amazon. It is the MPPT45, which can handle up to 45 amps. Um, this thing right here runs you around 800 to 850 if you buy it on Amazon or uh, some of the other websites. And uh, let's move to the batteries. If you don't have cores when you go to buy batteries, um, that's where it's going to cost you. Now. A lot of people are going with the, uh, you know, they say lead is dead and uh, they don't use lead acid batteries anymore. I still use lead acid batteries because um, they seem to work good for me and they're cheaper, much cheaper, about half the price still. Um, I don't use these batteries all the way down, which you can do that with some of these lithium batteries. You can run them all the way flat out until your inverter shuts off. I don't do that. I keep these batteries always above 70% charge. They're always above 70%. I never bring them low and uh, I never, I never run them down low. So they never get a full cycle. Uh, that in turn will make them last about 10 years. So far, so good. It's been one year. Everything is good. Right here on the back side of the shed. Um, here's where the wiring comes out. Uh, this wiring right here goes direct in the ground. It is a direct burial wire, um, six gauge, and it runs to the house. This little wire coming out here is what goes to your generator. You can hook this to your generator right here and back charge your batteries if you have several cloudy days and you need to charge your batteries up. Coming out the side here is uh, ground wires for uh, the ground rod. You definitely want ground rods out here for lightning strikes. And uh, here's the wires that are coming in from the actual combiner box, the green and the black wire. And uh, that's where your power is coming in, going directly to your charge controller. Now, what I did was I rented a trencher and I trenched the ground all the way to the house from the battery shed. And the reason, other people were asking this question also. The reason why I put the panels out here in the field, in the open field, is so they can get a lot of sun. The reason why I put the house way over here in the shade is so it didn't get any sun so i didn't want to put the house in the sun and have the solar panels on top of the house to me i'd rather have the house in the shade and the panels in the sun and run a longer wire now we're in the house and here's one of the things i wanted to show you 
Um, a lot of people were doubting that the AC could be ran off of the solar. Um, so we're going to prove that to you here in just a second. Here is the uh, AC. It's on and running. And uh, it's on high. It's on cool. And it's set at 62 degrees. So uh, we are right now in the house. Pretty chilly. 69 degrees in the house Fahrenheit. Um, we're running lights. We're running refrigerator and freezer with nothing in it, but it's on. So yeah, everything is good right now. The sun is up, the sun is shining good. And you're using the sun there's the sun we're using the sun to cool the house so right now we are completely cooling the house off of just the sun uh, we're pulling uh, 702 watts right now from the solar panels we're still holding at 54.0 volts on the batteries uh, it is floating still this means that uh, we're not pulling nothing from the batteries. That means that the air conditioner, the refrigerator, the fan, everything else that's on in the house, the lights, they're all being pulled directly off the solar panels and nothing is even pulling from the batteries. Now this is just a little 8,000 BTU air conditioner. Um, you could put a 12,000 in here, 10,000, 12,000. Uh, there's no need for it in this thing. This is a uh, 12 by 28 little uh, tiny house. And uh, 8,000 BTU is plenty for this house. Um, but uh, even if you had a bigger house, you needed a bigger, bigger air conditioner, you could use a solar system like this to run it in the heat of the day. Now, when we get into the night, it's a different story. Unless you have a large battery bank, I don't have a large enough battery bank to run this all night long. Now, it'll run everything else all night long. But the air conditioner, no, it's not gonna run that all night long without draining the batteries after about six hours. That's right, boys and girls, completely off the sun. Completely off the sun. Whew, that's nice, nice and cool. I'm trying to think of any more questions that people had in the comments. I mean, you can do the math on it if you wanna know the prices. Um, I, you know, like I said, I got it, uh, you know, somewhat used i have built another system that was just like this one with some of the same exact equipment and that's how i know the prices on it all now i really did get a steal on this system um you know for let's let's say for the solar panels i want to say for the solar panels the inverter and the charge controller and eight core batteries that he had that were no good because they burned up on him before he ever got to use them L leaving them out in the sun by the way don't ever do that uh i believe i purchased the whole setup from him for 1900 i'd have to look at venmo but i, I believe that's what it was i paid for it so with that being said what could you get it for that's probably more important to you versus what I got it for. Um, like I said, it's about 50 cents a watt now. So if you got, you know, 3,400 watts, what, 1,600 or, uh, you know, 1,800 bucks worth of panels, uh, you know, between 16 and 1,800, and that'll get you, you know, a 3.4 kilowatt system. Um, the batteries. Uh, it's your choice whether you want to go with the new technology um, and spend two or three thousand um, dollars on a single battery. I'm bet I, I'm good uh, for now. I'm going to keep going with lead acid batteries or what they call golf cart batteries. That's what I'm using um, <clears throat> until you can uh, get those prices down for me. I'm good. I'm going to stick with what I got. So uh, if you were to get what I got now, without having the cores, you're probably going to pay somewhere around. 1400 for eight batteries 
you know, the wiring that I got was included in the package deal that I bought from my buddy. But if you were going to buy that wiring, um, like I said, it would be somewhere around 150 bucks. So you take uh, about you take about uh, 1,800 for the panels, 150 dollars for the wiring. And then you want to buy some kind of box or shed or something that's waterproof to be able to keep your equipment in and all that. Um, I paid 300 for a shed from Home Depot. So for the charge controller, you're looking at around 550 give or take a little. And for the actual inverter charger, you're going to be looking at somewhere around 850 give or take a little. So uh, as far as... The six gauge uh, direct barrel wire that went to the house, I got it from Home Depot. I believe I got a 200 foot or 170 foot, I cannot remember, um, somewhere close to that, but it cost around 300 bucks, so I don't know, $2 a foot, something like that. It could be higher now. Um, the combiner box, I've seen them for about 100 bucks, 140 bucks. <sighs> So there it is, ladies and gentlemen. The solar is running the air conditioner in the whole house. Not a problem, without a problem. Keeping the batteries completely topped off, having them ready for us to use tonight when the sun goes down. Now I have to admit, people are subscribing to my channel like crazy, but if you haven't subscribed, it might be good that you do. That way you can keep up with these updates on the solar system. Three months from now, it will be hot and we will be able to see where we're at as far as the solar goes. And I think that uh, that'd be a good time to do a new video and have a new update.